Well, welcome back to the channel everyone and I'm going to give you five top tips to help your feeder fishing. Right, tip one, and it's all about worm fishing. Now worms, undoubtedly one of the best baits you can get when feeder fishing. Roach, skimmers, perch, even carp, love them. Finely chopped worms can just make a massive difference to your session. And the good thing is about worms as well, you get an instant response. So what I mean is you can be fishing away with maggots, casters, baits like that. Put a little blob of worms in your feeder, little worm on the hook, chuck it out and you'll catch a better fish. And it's just amazing how often putting neat worms through your feeder can make a massive difference and catch you lots more fish. Now there's a few things when it comes to worms, obviously, get yourself a nice pair of scissors. There's loads on the market now with two blades. Get yourself a pair of them. They make a big difference to make everything nice and easy. Get yourself a little pole pot, something like that with a rounded base. You'd, even like a, a, a tin or a rounded pot, something that's round makes chopping easy. I believe a fresh chop's best. By that I mean doing small amounts regular. Some people prefer to chop it, it all at the start. It's personal preference, I like a fresh chop. Now what I like to do is clean off my worms at the start of the session. So I'll put them on a riddle and then get them as neat as I can get them like that. So there's as little muck in them as possible. Then it's just a case of transferring them into, into your pot. Chop them up nice and fine. I think for feeder fishing for silvers, you want them as fine as possible. The only thing is when you mince them up as like that, you get a lot of juice in the bottom. Now, in the olden days, I'd have probably put that juice in my ground bait, but it has to be said that I think the juice clogs your ground bait up too much and affects how your ground bait works. So what you need is one of these little strainers. Like again, loads of companies do them. I think this is a Preston, yeah, this is a Preston one. I just got it out of the shop. Um, put your chop worms on there. As you can see, I've not actually got any left from this session. Uh, and then put it inside your little tub and it'll drain off all that excess moisture. So you still get the juice and the good, the finely chopped worms that's nice and uh, that the fish want to actually eat. But all that horrible, well, you can see it, it's like blood in there, is not in your ground bait. Whether the fish like it is up for debate, but personally, I'd rather get rid of that. And those little strainers are an absolute winner. Now, when it comes to worms, um, dendrobinas are all you need. Don't get me wrong, there's a place for red worms on the hook, but just for feed, dendrobinas are all you need. Get them from a good quality dealer, willy worms, from the local tackle shop, wherever. Get the freshest worms you can get. Chop them up in small quantities, they're not cheap, so you can always chop a few more up if you need them, but you don't want to be wasting them. And then the best bait for me today, I've caught a lovely big perch, I've got some nice roach, a few skimmers, I've caught them all on a tiny little worm head, like the size of a pea, like a tiny little piece. It's amazing how often that's the best hook bait and that little worm head combined with a little blob of chop worm in your ground bait can make a big difference. Tip number two when it comes to feeder fishing is the feeder itself. Now there's loads on the market, loads of options. There's just loads of good ones, but try and break them down into a couple of little categories. There's three main ones that you're probably gonna need. The first is your bog standard cage style feeder. So these are the smooth hounds, lovely little feeder. I like the mini at this time of year. Just enough bait to tempt a few fish into the area without overfeeding them. But importantly, it's that cage design. I'm not a big lover of um, solid feeders. They do have a place on rivers and stuff, but on like still waters like this, I much prefer um, a plastic cage style feed. I just think they present the bait much better. A bit bait comes off it as it falls through the water and I just think it's a better option. Try and use the lightest what you can get away with. You want to be able to hit your mark accurately every single time, but you want to do it without creating massive splodouches on the surface. So 15, 20 grams, 25 grams is about perfect for um, this time of year. So the cage feeder is the first feeder out of the box for me. I like to use this at the start of the session, building the peg, bits of ground bait are coming off it, fluttering through the water, pulling fish into the area. The cage works wonders. However, when the fish um, are in the peg and you maybe want to focus them down a little bit, a little window feeder, again, loads of them on the market. This is a little Preston one, can, can absolutely work wonders. Beauty of these is you can put almost neat worms in there, just a little cap of ground bait, or, or you can put your ground bait in and, and press it in there nice and firmly, but it gets your bait to the bottom. You're chucking it in, it sinks really quick, it just gets straight to the bottom, you're fishing really positive, 
great, great feeders at the windows. And often you can switch to that and start bagging up. And I think a lot of people have got the misconception that window feeders are only for distance work. They're not. A little one like that, a little 20 gram, on a little, this is like a little club lake that I come and fish. Perfect here, 20 grams, that'll cast a mile. More than adequate for what we're doing here in this sort of eight foot swim. Massive difference that can make. And today, like I say, just literally in the window. So the, the, the feed is pretty much neat worms. A little smear of ground bait on the top. That has been deadly today. I've caught loads of fish doing that. Um, and it's, it's just a, a great way of catching fish. So those two feeders are, are brilliant. Use the, the cage to sort of build the swim, switch to the window to sort of um, actually catch the fish once they're in your swim and you can't go far wrong. But there is one more feeder that is neglected an awful lot and that is the simple maggot feeder. Now, this lake's gin clear, fish love maggots here. Little maggot feeder like that, it's only got 10 grams of lead on it, it hardly makes a noise when it hits the surface. Obviously, you're putting in 30 to 40 maggots every single cast. It can just get your bites when those other feeders just don't. And sometimes the fish just don't want all that ground bait. And the maggot feeder can be a deadly, deadly feeder. So those three, at this time of year, can be absolutely fantastic. So get yourself some of them. Little smooth round cage is your, is your go-to feeder. Your window is like the, the trick up your sleeve and then the maggot feeder on those calm days, such as this, can be a real winner. Right, tip three is the ground bait itself. Now, in the UK, I've got to be honest, it's very, very rare for me to even consider cereal, sweet type ground baits. By that I mean the traditional brown crumb based, biscuit based ground baits. It just doesn't really come into my fishing anymore. It's all about fish meal style mixes. And I think that goes for 70% of the anglers out there. Don't get me wrong, there's rivers and stuff where you still need your cereal baits, but even here on a, on a natural sort of lake that's gin clear, you still want your fish meal ground baits. Now, we're talking autumn sort of style now. Going into winter, you've got to tailor your ground baits accordingly. Um, I've spoke about it several times on recent videos and I like, I spoke about it several times on recent videos and I like Sonya Bates F1 Dark as like my base. So that is my base ground bait. It's very neutral. It's fish meal, but it's very low fish meal content. Um, it's got a lovely creamy sort of smell. It's dark, so it doesn't put the fish off in clear water. Um, and it's just a great bait. You can use it neat. You can use it straight out of the bag and you'll catch loads of fish. However, just to boost it a little bit, just to add a bit more attraction to it, I like to add Thatcher's. Thatcher's Dark is my preference, to just to keep everything in that sort of dark uh, mode. And then I like to add the Bait Booster Liquid to it. I add that to my mixing water. It makes the ground bait sweet to taste. So you actually taste it and it tastes sweet. And I just think that that is a bit of a confidence booster for me. And I think the fish do actually generally like the sweet sort of flavor. So that's the ground bait. Add as much of factors, if you if it's a really warm day and you're going to a place that's positive, don't be frightened to go 50-50 F1 dark and factors dark. If like today I'm on a venue that isn't that prolific, I've gone um, two pints F1 dark to half a pint of factors. So I've still got that factors in there. I can still smell a bit of fish meal at the back, but it's primarily F1 dark. But like I say, if I was going to bast in somewhere like that that's prolific, bit of colour in the water, I wouldn't hesitate to use 50-50 and then use that bait booster in my uh, mixing water. So yeah, nice little ground bait mix there. You will not go wrong with that at this time of year. It's, it's just absolute winner. Right, tip four is all about organisation. Now I'm not a very organised kind of guy. You've all seen me on my videos, I've got stuff strewn everywhere. However, when it comes to feeder fishing, the last thing you want is for every time you fill your feeder up, your hook clamps are getting stuck around your trays, around your box legs, around your bowls, around it. It's just a nightmare. You don't want to be reaching for it, because I'm like chopping and changing feeders all the time. I want everything to hand. So I think without trying to be pluggy, um, it's important to be organized when you feed a fish in. At the front, I've got a bowl and ring. So I've got my ground bait in there. It's nice and clean. I've got everything, it's just there, exactly where I need it. It's not moving around or anything like that. On this tray, I've got a hooded side tray, so if it does rain, I can obviously just pop that up. It could be an aqualock if you are an aqualock kind of guy, then an aqualock's great. But I like that um, hoodie. 
uh, and I've got my live bait at the front here, so I've got my maggots, um, my worms, and then my feeders and my spare ground bait, my feeders, my hook lengths, all go in this slimline tray at the back. So my scissors, I've just got them out for my demo just a minute ago, but all my like, stuff that I'm not needing on every single chuck are all in here. So they're out of the way, nice and safe, nice and dry, and then when, as soon as I need a bit more ground bait, I've got it here in a bowl, I've got another bowl of ground bait just there. I can top that bowl up if I need to, if I want to take a bit out and maybe slop it up, I can do that. I've got my, my scissors are nicely to hand, my spare or clamps, my spare feeders, my phone goes in this little pocket because I know it's dry, it's out of the way. Everything's to hand. I think it makes a big difference. And this that goes for pole fishing as well. But I think when you're loading a feeder all the time and you're constantly in and out, I think it makes a big difference to your uh, efficiency. So just some, a little tip there, but I think it can make a big difference. Now tip number five, and it's the final one, is the length of your hook length. Now, I think in this day and age, we're sort of obsessed with super short hook lengths, method feeders, that kind of thing. But when it comes to traditional feeder tactics, as you can see, I've just got a nice little free running cage feeder on there with a, a little sliding pattern oster feeder link down to a bead. And then I've got a relatively long 70 centimeter hook length. Now, I think, because of international rules and stuff, everybody is just sticks a 50 centimetre hook length on to come to go with the rules. But there is a there is a case for using longer hook lengths sometimes. And today, for example, I've been missing bites, um, not even getting bites on a 50 centimetre hook length, and I've put a 70 centimetre hook length on, which when it added to me little boom probably gives me 80 centimetres and I'm catching a fishy chuck doing that. Granted a lot of them are roach, smaller roach, odd little skimmer, but that long hook length in this, in this um, clear water is obviously presenting my bait a little bit slower, just giving them a bit longer to spot it and they're snatching at it. And I think it's making a difference. So just because everybody's obsessed with short hook lengths these days, because we're all method feeder fishing and we're all method mad nowadays, don't forget that long hook lengths can really work and even, Say when you're fishing worms in the feeder and the fish are clearly feeding well, having that long hook length can score. And uh, even at bass and stuff, I've caught loads of times with 70 centimetre hook length when you would think that the fish are coming straight to the feeder. And it's just nothing revolutionary, but just have your hook lengths tied up a bit longer on your spare spools and try it because it can make a big difference. Like I say, today, the longer hook length has definitely been better for getting bites. It's really, really made a big difference. Now a little bonus tip, just for something to think about before we finish the video, and that is setting your quiver tip. Now here today, there's no toe, there's no nothing, there's no wind, there's nothing. The lake is flat calm, it's like a mill pond. If I tighten right round to my quiver tip, if I've got a one ounce tip in this rod today, if I tighten right round to it, I get a little dink on the tip and then nothing happens. I'm too tight, I'm too, it's just a bit too aggressive if that makes sense. The feeling of resistance and the drop in the bait, like a little jab and they're gone. No good. So what I'm actually doing, I'm chucking out, I'm letting my line sink, I'm putting my tip under the water, I'm letting my line sink so I can get tight to my feeder and then I'm backing off. So using the full width of the yoga rest, I'm tightening up at this end of the yoga so my tip's bent and then as soon as I feel like everything's set nicely, I push the rod along the rest to the other end of the rest so that everything's slack. So but I'm, I'm to the feed, I'm, I'm as direct to the feed as possible without putting excess tension on the tip. And you just get that little, little soft bite and then it'll just pull around. So you, they're like pulling themselves on. Rather than being tight to the feeder, you get that little jab and then nothing materializes. Having it tensioned, let a bit of slack off but you're still tight to it. Your line and everything's tight to your feeder, but you've just backed off a little bit. Just gives them that bit of slack to pull themselves on. And I think that is such a big edge. We're so obsessed these days, fishing dead depth, dotted down floats, seeing everything as soon as possible. But with feeder fishing and natural fishing, often giving the fish a bit, time, bit of time to take the bait can make a big difference to how many bites you hit. Today I've been fishing for little fish, and trust me, being able to um, hook them fish and giving them a little bit longer has meant that I've been coming back with one just about every chuck in. Whereas when I was tight to them, 
I was coming back with like one in every three casts, which is just not efficient enough. Where I was just giving them that bit of tension, then slack, letting them pull themselves on has meant that, I'm not gonna say 100% hit success rate, but a good success rate. So try that, tighten up, give yourself a little bit of slack, and you'll, I'm sure you'll hit more bites on the feeder.